Let's go through the calculation of finding the expectation value of the momentum operator for our first energy eigenstate in the infinite square law. So in my notes I know what I'm doing, but I realize I haven't drawn out the whole what is the potential and everything. So what is this? We know that if I want to calculate the expectation value of that operator, I need to actually have a specific quantum state in mind in order to do it. And so then we have to convert this into an integral if we're in the position representation. So I'm starting very, very generally, but we're going to simplify pretty quickly. And we would then have the complex conjugate of whatever state, so the one that's appearing in the bra. We would then have our operator, and that momentum operator was negative i h bar d dx. Okay, and then again, my state. So this is the general starting point. Now what we know about our state is that it's zero outside of the well. So we don't really have to integrate from negative infinity to infinity. We can basically imagine a region where our state is zero, a region where it's not zero, a region where it's zero. So what that means is our integral is going to become from zero to L. And now let's be a little bit careful. Let's first write this just as, as that state. And we know that when I have phi one of x, that that was square root of two over L sine n pi x over L. So n in this case is in fact one, so that's pi x over L. Since this is real, complex conjugate of it is just itself. Now don't make the mistake of saying, oh yeah, that's just squared. No, this operator in the middle matters, so keep the order. Again, when we start with matrix work, hopefully you're in the habit of maintaining the order because we need that order now. So I'm gonna say, okay, two over L, square root, sine of pi x over L, and now I have this operator. So negative i h bar d dx, and I'm gonna write down my function again. Again, don't forget all those coefficients up front, which we need for normalization, or else nothing will make sense. So pi x over L dx. Okay, so now what? So now anything that is a scalar we can just pull out, pull out in front um, of the integral itself. And we then can take our operator and act on what's to the right. So I'm going to pull out front. We have square root of two over L, square root of two over L, so that's gonna become two over L. And then I'm also gonna pull out this I h bar, nice. So now I have my integral of zero to L. So sine pi x over L, that's to the left of this, so we don't have to do anything with that. That's just gonna stay there for now. So sine of pi x over L. Okay, then we need to take the derivative of this. Okay, what is the derivative of sine of something x with respect to x? So sine is going to become what? Cosine, right? So sine becomes cosine, and we have to pull the coefficient from inside out. So that's pi over L, and then I have cosine of pi x over L dx. Okay, so now we have another coefficient that I can pull out front, fine, but then we're left with this thing to integrate. Now, one option is you can try to use a trig identity to try to simplify this first. I'm gonna look in the table of integrals in the book and see if there's one that's actually a little bit appropriate. So what I'm trying to integrate here, and again, I'm gonna bring this term out front. So I have negative two i h bar pi over L squared, right? So, that's, that's what I have. So then, my integral is zero to L, and I'm gonna simplify this a little bit to just be sine, let's call it A, of AX, where A here is equal to pi over L, right? Pi over L, so sine of AX, cosine of AX, DX. Now, 
Maybe you know what that integral is off the top of your head. Maybe you think about using a double angle formula or something to convert it. Maybe you go, oh yeah, I learned these trig substitutions, whatever it is. You might have a technique of doing this. I'm gonna look in the table of integrals. So what we learn when we look at the table of integrals, and this is a little bit tricky to, to realize what it's telling you. If you look at f dot three, it says that sine, the integral of sine mx cosine nx dx equals all this stuff. What that's telling you is that these coefficients don't have to be the same in order to use this. In our case, it is. So the one it's giving us is sine of mx, right? Sine of mx cosine nx dx equals, and it's going to be big and messy. This will, this will in fact take me a second. But here's the challenge. If you look at the very end of it, it says all this stuff, and it then says m squared does not equal n squared. Huh. So we get all this stuff, and at the very end it says m squared does not equal n squared. But it does for us. Hmm. So this isn't the one we want to use, actually. So this in itself is helpful, and I'm pointing it out for a reason that we will have situations where we need to integrate something that looks like these and these are not the same, look at equation F3. But in this case, that might be the first one you see. It's not the one you want, actually. If instead we look down a little bit further, we say that F6 is probably the one we want because that's just sine AX cosine AX. So sine AX cosine ax, oh, that looks just like what we have dx, equals 1 over 2a sine squared of ax. And now that you see that written down, you go, oh yeah, that does make sense, because if I take the derivative of that, it's like inside, outside. Yeah, okay, I get that. So hopefully now that you see it written down, you know why it's that. Again, I'm going to use the table of integrals rather than always look at an integral and say, do I know a technique? I have a table. So we see what this is, and we now have, OK, negative 2i h bar pi over l squared. None of the markers are working for me. And so now this integral is going to be 1 over 2a. And, and I will do it this way since we'll have to plug in limits. 1 over 2a, where a is pi over l. So 2 pi over L, and now I have sine squared of AX, so that's going to be pi X over L, and then this is from 0 to L. Okay, now what's going to happen? Well, let's go ahead and, and I can cancel some stuff. I enjoy canceling. That feels very satisfying. One of those L's cancels here. So I'm left with negative i h bar over L. And then on the inside, I have sine squared. I'll plug in L. So I get pi L over L, so that's sine squared of pi, minus, plug in 0, sine squared of 0. OK. What is sine of pi? Sine of pi is 0. Square it, you get 0. What is sine of 0? zero, square it, get zero. So what do we make of this? I have zero minus zero. Well, that's still zero. So my expectation value, that thing I was trying to find to pop back up where I still have a little bit of space, this equals zero. Oh, the expectation value of my momentum of this particle is zero. That's true. And in fact, the expectation value for any of the energy eigenstates is going to be zero. And there's one thing that should have given away that this is going to happen. Momentum is a measurable quantity, right? Momentum is like mass times velocity in a classical sense that at least will get you the right type of units. Notice that I had an I here. Were you worried about that? You should have been. Because if I tell you that I throw a ball and you know it has this mass and its momentum is four kilogram meters per second I, that should worry you. Momentum should be a real quantity. So the fact that there's an I here means we, I, we needed some sort of other I somewhere, or else it needs to be zero. 
And the solution to this, it is not that every single state has zero momentum. That also doesn't sound right. These energy eigenstates, they do have momentum of zero. Okay. When we introduce time dependence and we get to some states that are not energy eigenstate, that in fact are not standing waves at all, we will be able to construct states that have expectation values of momentum and they're actually going to have some complex terms in here. There will be some eyes so that in the end we still get a real momentum. So just wanted to point that out now. Um, it is certainly not going to be the case that you always get zero for momentum, but you really don't want to get an imaginary number. So hopefully that's a little bit helpful.